Hello, hello, everybody. So I've heard a lot growing up about the quote unquote merits of digital art versus traditional art and how with traditional art, it's more real because you can't go back and fix mistakes. There's no undo button. First, I'd like to just say that that's complete BS and it's complete BS for a couple of reasons. So when I was in art school, we used traditional art mediums for the majority of our projects up until the third year. Um, it was mostly charcoal and some black and white acrylic paint, um, some oil paint, and I think that was basically it. Uh, each class was six hours long, and let me tell you, we spent those six hours meticulously fixing each and every one of our mistakes until we eventually just gave up and decided to call it done. Of course, different mediums are more forgiving than others. Like for instance, with acrylic paint, you can continuously paint over it. I mean, to an extent, it does get like really thick and kind of gross after a while, but still. Uh, and skill level is also something that matters a ton here. But it's honestly just too simplistic to say that traditional art equals you can't fix your mistakes. And with digital art, you're gonna get perfect results. It's just not true. What I will say though is going back to traditional art after mostly using digital art, or scratch that, I think it's more accurate to say just switching up mediums in general does something really interesting to my brain. <laughs> so I deal a lot with the need to control every situation in my life. It used to be real bad, but uh, I've been working on it. But uh, a lot of the time still, if I'm not in control, or rather, if I don't feel like I'm in control, I get a lot of anxiety. Um, like I said, it's definitely something that I've been working on, and probably the biggest thing that I have been working on for the past few years. Um, but like with everything else, it also affects how I do my art. So when I do art, sometimes I could be such a stickler for the tiniest of little details, even if nobody else will notice them. If I notice them, it's completely unacceptable. To the point where a lot of the time I'll go back and if I post something, like I'll, I'll post a piece of artwork and then I'll go back and stare at it and scrutinize and see, hmm, is this, is this perfect? Is there a single pixel out of place? And of course there's always a pixel out of place because that's just life. Life is filled with pixels out of place. <laughs> you heard it from me. But in my opinion, this isn't a healthy or realistic approach to anything, especially not creating. It is the single easiest trick to get yourself to hate whatever you're doing, no matter what it is. And I'm not the type to say, oh, art, it's, art is supposed to be like this, or artists need to think this way, or in order to be an artist, you need to do this. But I do think that it's really self-limiting to try to be that meticulous over every single detail. It's just not an efficient use of my time, and it honestly really just sucks the joy out of creating. It forces you to think only about the end result and not about the actual act of whatever it is that you're creating. And if you're anything like me, then I think it's pretty safe to say that you probably started creating because you enjoy the act of doing it as well as the end result. I mean, that's why I started. I thought it was fun. Um, so with this painting in particular, this Sailor Mercury, um, because I'm so unfamiliar, unfamiliar with watercolors, I'd say other than alcohol markers, it's probably my least um, familiar, I guess, or I guess my least practiced traditional medium. I simply just don't really know how to control them. Blending is almost impossible for me, and I find that a lot of the times the colors just kind of go wherever they decide to go, and there's really nothing I could do about it. But surprisingly, this kind of works in my favor because it's forced me to just accept mistakes because they're gonna be there, they're gonna be inevitable, and I can't do anything about it. I can't get rid of them unless I just scrapped the art altogether and started over, and I value my time way too much to do that. One of these mistakes is that giant blue blob that I accidentally got on her face. When that happened, I almost gave up painting. I, <laughs> I even made an audible, ah! Uh. 
um, after realizing that I couldn't scrub away the color because I guess with watercolor, you can't really do that. Um, and I wasn't about to start over, but I was just gonna quit and cover up the page with something else. But instead, I decided to just roll with it and make it look like I meant to do that. And honestly, I'm really happy with the result. It's not perfect. There's a lot that I would change, but I mean, that's, that's how it is. I still really like it. Um, I never would have thought to even make the water droplets go over her face if that hadn't accidentally happened. And honestly, I believe the piece is better for it. I think it's more interesting and I just like it like that. So in that way, because I was forced to kind of let go and just roll with where the painting took me, I gained something cool that I otherwise just wouldn't have had. And going back to the traditional versus digital art thing, I will say that I see a lot of digital artists paint in a way that doesn't look controlled at all. Of course, I'm sure that it is in their own way, but I've always really admired the sort of intentional messiness, I guess you could call it, that some of these artists can create. Um, like for instance, they'll show their paint strokes and sometimes the lines will be a little blurry, like they won't be super crisp and clear and perfect but it still works so well. And when I first started doing digital art, I wanted to erase any evidence of paint strokes, but I can't really say why. M maybe, I don't know, maybe young me felt like art was more professional if it looked what I felt was perfect. Needless to say, I definitely don't believe that showing brush strokes or not showing brush strokes has anything to do with professionalism. And I also don't think there's anything wrong with a super controlled painting style either. It's just different. And these days I've come to really appreciate showing your work, to put it one way. I still tend to make my digital art look really polished. I think that's just kind of my way of doing digital art. It's just what I'm used to. It's what I've done for years and years. Um, and I don't really think that's gonna change all that much, but I've been trying to accept less polished art. So for instance, not doing perfect blending, um, just accepting if some lines aren't absolutely perfect, maybe they're a little wavy, and just trying not to hit undo a million times. I still do, but you know, steps, baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> doing it that way, forcing myself to not be so quote unquote perfect, because I say that word, it's not perfect, but you know what I mean. But forcing myself to accept things that I don't consider perfect, um, not only does it force a change in mindset that I personally think is really healthy for me, it's also way more efficient, so I can actually create more artwork with the limited time that I have. Again, the purpose of this isn't trying to get you to change the way you do art if you like to be really controlled. I would never ever tell somebody else how to create. It's just something I noticed in myself, and I'm happy that I did, because I, I really believe that growth starts with observation, and I'm always looking to grow, both as a person and as an artist. But that's all for this video. I hope that you have enjoyed um, watching me make this painting, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Um, but before you go, uh, if you didn't know, I have a Ko-Fi coffee. Kofi? <laughs> I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but I have one of those where I sometimes upload freebies like um, digital stickers and emotes and other assets that you could use for Discord servers and streams. And I also have a few coloring pages also. So you can actually find a digital line art version of this artwork as well as a few others on my Kofi Ko Ko <laughs> over there, which is linked in the description. I hope you enjoy. Please take care of yourselves, and I hope you have a cozy evening filled with stars. Bye! <laughs>